Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be shopping my stash for April. Can I just say, I am so glad that it is actually spring, that April is here. It's starting to warm up. I have been going mildly crazy for the last couple of months. So I just feel like everything is lighter, my mood is better, and I am entirely ready to refresh my makeup collection. Now, if you're new here, oh, well, first of all, uh, welcome. Hi, I'm Lauren. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with me today. But this is a series I've been doing on my channel for a while, so I basically go through my larger makeup collection, pick out some products to put on my vanity so I can use them on like a daily basis throughout the entire month. And then I recap for you guys the like standout products that I used, what I thought of them, if there were things that I ended up re-falling in love with or stuff that I decided I'm going to declutter. And then we pick out new stuff for the next month. So today we're gonna be recapping March and then I'll show you what I have picked out for April. And uh, these videos tend to be super long, so just as an FYI, I will put a timestamp in the description box. If you wanna skip ahead to what I've picked out in April and don't wanna hear me review the products I've been using for the last month. And uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, grab your snack, grab your drink, get cozy. And let's get into it. So why don't we get started with a couple of complexion products. Uh, the first of which is something that I put back into the rotation in March because I hadn't used it in a long time and I wasn't really sure how I felt about it and if it was something that I wanted to keep or I wanted to declutter. And that is the Koki Skin Perfect HD Foundation. So this I would describe as a buildable foundation that can go anywhere from light to relatively full coverage with a very natural finish. The Koki is a drugstore brand, so this is under $15. I don't remember the exact price, but it's not like anything crazy exorbitant. And I had remembered generally getting along with this pretty well. And over the last month, I kind of feel equally sort of so-so about this. I didn't absolutely fall like head over heels in love with it, but I don't think it's a bad product. I think there is definitely a target audience for this guy. I think if you're someone with normal skin, maybe even like normal to dry skin, that doesn't have a ton to cover, like doesn't have a lot of acne or redness or spots, whatnot, but wants an option for foundation that's going to make their skin look a little more even, a little bit more perfected. I think you would probably absolutely love this product because it's not too dewy and it's not too mattifying. It looks really healthy and natural on the skin. You could go in with a very sheer layer of it if you just want a little bit of coverage or you can layer it up and it doesn't ever really look cakey. I personally feel like the reason why I didn't love this is because I'm oily and it's not the most mattifying. So it looked nice on me in the beginning, but then after a couple of hours, it does start to look shiny and I kind of have to touch it up relatively frequently to keep it looking good. So yes, I totally would recommend this as a drugstore foundation to a large chunk of people. I think if you're super, super oily like me, it's not like a total grease fest. It's just not my preferred foundation formula. Now, this next product I wanted to give a shout out to because I feel like over the last month, I have grown in appreciation for it. So this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder, and I wear the shade Fair Light. Even though I would consider myself more of a light medium complexion, this particular shade had more of a neutral yellow undertone to it. I felt like the light medium ones looked more pink, so with my skin having warm undertones, I felt like this would suit me better. It makes my skin look very airbrushed. It doesn't ever look very dry and flaky and cakey. It helps my makeup to last longer and when I apply it with a damp sponge on my under eyes I feel like it really locks my concealer in and it helps to not accentuate the look of fine lines and you know I've been experimenting more with that kind of technique that I don't really say I would bake I'm not like really loading on the powder super heavy but going in with a damp sponge and kind of really pressing it into the makeup to help to set it I've actually really been liking that technique lately and having now experimented with that with these different powders like the Fenty one is nice, but I almost feel like that one looks drier than this, which is crazy because it's so much more expensive. I mean, this is like mm, seven, eight dollars, and then the Fenty is 32. So I just feel like as far as a loose setting powder goes, especially if you're a combination too oily, if you haven't tried this, 
I would highly recommend checking it out because it's very affordable. You get plenty of product in here and I just feel like it's been working so well for me. Every time I use this, I feel like my makeup looks really nice and it lasts much longer. So just wanted to give you guys an update. I'm really, really enjoying this and it's currently, I think, the top powder that I have in my collection. Now, honestly, I think one of my favorite things about doing this whole Shop My Stash Everyday Makeup Drawer series is rotating through my blush, bronzer, and highlight collection because I have so many singles and I really was not utilizing enough of them last year. I would kind of get stuck on the same ones or I would only be using the ones that were new in my collection and then it would be like six, seven months before I had touched something and I felt like I just was really wasting a lot of product. So making myself pick out a select few and using them for an entire month really makes me feel like I'm actually appreciating my blush bronzer and highlight collection. So as far as what I actually had picked out for March, there are three things that I have like re-fallen in love with. So first is the Balm's Bahama Mama Bronzer. I really do enjoy this formula a lot. It's a little bit on the deeper side, so I think if you are very, very fair, this may look a little muddy on you. You probably would have to go in with a very, very light hand because it's a pretty pigmented product, but on my skin tone, it's worked out really well for me. It's very smooth. It's not patchy. The Balm really does make amazing powder products, and I think that they're just a little bit underrated and underappreciated because as a brand, the Balm is not launching new stuff every three seconds, so they're just not constantly in the limelight they're not talked about as much but I would say like don't overlook them they're very reasonably priced they're very very easy to work with and they last really nicely on the skin so I really enjoyed having this in my daily rotation again I got some good use out of it I'm sad to be putting it back into the drawer but we need to give some love to something else this month and again, I've got another one here that is such an underrated, beautiful product, and that is the Lorac Color Source Blush in the shade Prism. I think this formula is absolutely stunning. It's very, very smooth. It's not chalky. It's got a beautiful buildable pigmentation to it that just looks really healthy and lovely on the skin. I can't tell if you can see that swatch, but I hope so. And I just feel like Lorac, again, is another brand that kind of just like fell off the map. Like they haven't launched a whole bunch of new stuff. And I feel like because they didn't do a Mega Pro palette during the holidays this past year, they really lost an opportunity to like capture everyone's attention. But some of their products they've had around forever are really good. Their whole Alter Ego collection for lips is awesome. And their powder, highlights, and blushes are beautiful. So I entirely loved using this this last month. I felt like it gave such a pretty peachy flush to the cheeks that again, never looked harsh. It's really easy to work with because it's not like insanely pigmented. You can just lightly layer it up to exactly the intensity that you want. It's just a really, really nice formula and I don't think they're insanely expensive either. They're in the $20 price point. So if you were looking for something a little bit more reasonable that really performs, Check these out, because they're very, very nice. And then finally, kind of exactly the same deal, uh, the Persona Kelly Glow Highlight in Zuma. This is just so freaking stunning. You guys have heard me rave about this many, many, many times. And Persona is one of those brands that not many people know about, like especially if you're not someone that watches a lot of YouTube, because the brand was started by a YouTuber and it's not sold in Ulta stores, it's not sold in drugstores, like you kind of have to know about it, you have to kind of be in the community to even know to look for this guy. Uh, and it's a shame because it's incredible and it's so reasonably priced. I'm pretty sure this highlight retails for $24, which isn't drugstore, isn't cheap, but this rivals my Ofra and Becca highlights for sure. Just look at the shine on this. It's beautiful and blinding and so reflective. I mean, you can go in with a very, very light hand to just get like a little wash of sheen on the skin, but this is really the highlight for people that love highlighter like that's what's gonna make this worth it for you because it is just so reflective and shiny and creamy on the skin it's just delicious it's amazing i love it and i was so happy to see this included in the 21 days of beauty sale you could pick this up for only 12 dollars i think 
last week, which was amazing. So I hope some of you guys were able to uh, grab this if it was something that was on your wish list because, I mean, you could not beat the price. For $12, like, you cannot get a better highlight than this. So if you watched last month's video in this series, you will remember that I challenged myself to exclusively use my collection of ColourPop single eyeshadows for all of my eye looks in March. And I'm happy to report back that uh, I did successfully do that. I have not reached for any other eyeshadow palettes. Today being April 1st is the first day I've put something other than ColourPop on my eyes. And uh, I have zero regrets about doing that challenge. I have loved every minute of playing with this palette. So I basically spent like a, an embarrassing amount of time picking out exactly what I needed to round up my collection, created what was ultimately this palette, and I am so happy with it. I feel like I kind of do really have a little bit of everything that I need. And uh, if I was forced to only use this palette for the rest of my life, I feel like I, I wouldn't be too upset about that. I mean, I would be upset because I love makeup and I want to try everything new, but as far as being able to create whatever look I want, I, I feel like I've got a pretty endless variety of options here. And now if you've never tried the ColourPop pressed eyeshadow formula, it is amazing. Both the mattes and the shimmery metallic shades, the more pearlized ones, like all of the formulas they create are fantastic and they perform just as well, if not better, than things that cost two to three times as much money. Like, I do also have Anastasia Beverly Hills singles, I have Makeup Geek, I have MAC, I have some from some indie brands, and honestly, I think my ColourPop singles are my favorite, and they are the cheapest ones that I own. And when ColourPop is doing those build your own palette sales, which they just did one, I don't know if it's still happening, odds are probably not, but they do do them periodically, and when they do, you're able to get a palette of this size with all the eyeshadows inside, and you get to pick them all out so you get exactly what you want. And the whole kit and caboodle is $44. And let's be serious, what high-end eyeshadow palette is going to give you this many color options for the same price and have this good of quality? And like, you're getting to pick everything that's in the palette, so you're getting exactly what you want and nothing that you don't. Like, it's the best deal, I feel like, in eyeshadow, kind of ever. Not to mention the fact that, I mean, these are full-size eyeshadow pans. Each one has got way more product in it than you'll probably find in a traditional pre-made palette. So, like, I cannot recommend doing this enough. I feel like ColourPop has such an insane variety of shades to pick from. Like, there is something for everyone. If you wanted to make a palette that was completely neutral, you could. If you wanted color, like, you got the whole rainbow to pick from in both matte and metallic finishes. So, like, I just, I think it's bomb. I love this. And if you have been watching my videos this month, I mean, literally every single look I did came from this palette with the inclusion occasionally of like a glitter or something like that that I would layer on top. But like, I feel like I've gotten so many compliments from you guys on the looks I've been wearing in my last couple of videos and it's all thanks to this palette. And it's really helped me get out of my comfort zone and play with color and to experiment more. And I just feel like it's been such a joy to use this. I really do love it. I entirely recommend it. I know ColourPop does have a lot of really cute pre-made smaller palettes that are cheaper than going this route and doing the build your own palette. I only own one of them and I do still think they are great. I'm sure the formula of the shadows is the same and therefore it's not going to disappoint. But like as far as bang for your buck and value goes, doing the build your own palette, like investing the $44 once is probably one of the smartest things you can do if you want to try ColourPop shadows. Uh, also, I would highly recommend if you're going to do that to uh, go visit at Temtalia's website because she has swatches of like every color pop shadow ever and that was really really helpful for me when I was trying to build my palette so I could kind of get a better feel for what the shades would actually look like on the skin versus just like having a picture of the pan. So long story short, 
This was awesome. I love it. Highly, highly, highly recommend. And I will keep you guys posted if they're doing another build your own palette deal because to actually buy the shadows individually and the palette, which is $10 if you don't get it in the bundle, obviously is really expensive. So I would not recommend going that route unless you're super impatient. But like, if you can stand to wait, wait for when they do one of those bundle deals because it is basically one of the best investments of your $44 you can do makeup wise. All right, so now that I'm done uh, gushing about ColourPop, let's uh, chat about some mascara. So I have been using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara for the last month or so, and I wanted to update you guys on this because I feel like this is one of those mascaras that starts one way and then it changes over time. And I actually am enjoying this more now than I did when I first started using it because because in the beginning, it was not quite as volumizing. This is one of those formulas that as it dries out, it kind of chunks up and gets thicker looking on the lashes. So if you have recently picked this up and started trying it out and you've only used it like two or three times and you're kind of like, mm, I don't understand what the hype is all about because like this isn't really doing very much, Give it like two solid weeks of regular use and it gets a lot better. I have noticed though that it does flake a little bit on me. I think because it is a thicker formula and there ends up being like a lot of product on the lashes. It's not like totally insane, but it's it's not the most bulletproof mascara formula I've ever tried. And I feel like the wand, because it does have like a lot of product that gets on it, does have the tendency to sometimes end up like hitting the lid. Like I find like it's just a little bit hard to wiggle this through the lashes and not have the bristles touch my eyelid a little bit. So that also kind of stinks because you know, if you've spent a whole bunch of time perfecting your eyeshadow, the last thing you wanna do is get mascara all over it. So is this my favorite formula of life? No, probably not, but I do like it. I'm enjoying using it. I don't feel like my lashes look bad. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. And I think it's, it's for someone that likes volumizing mascaras like myself, it's decent. All right, and then to wrap up things from March, we've got a bunch of lip products to talk about. So if you guys saw my beauty report video, uh, you'll know I told the whole story about my Pat McGrath lip glosses. All your comments, you've convinced me that I will throw these guys away as much as it completely breaks my heart. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to repurchase the set or not, I still haven't decided because like, yes, $25 is not an insane amount of money, but when I think about my makeup budget, which is pretty limited, it kind of does make me a little bit crazy to think about spending like more than a quarter of it on a product that I already just bought when I could be trying something else. So at this point, the verdict is still out. I know the Sephora VIB sale is coming down the line. So, you know, I would be able to save 15% during that sale if I did decide I wanted to repurchase this because I can pretty much only get it at Sephora. But these lip glosses are absolutely beautiful. I love them. I enjoyed wearing these shades so, so much for the couple of days that I did get to wear them. And I was, at the time, pairing them with this Maybelline lip liner, which I also am going to throw away uh, because it's probably infected. And this I do feel less bad about because I literally only have this much product left. I had been using this for a while. This lip liner is actually pretty old, so it probably needed to be chucked anyway. But uh, this is the Maybelline Color Sensational Shaping Lip Liner in the shade Purely Nude. And if you need a nice, like, light-toned, peachy pink nude lip liner. This one's really, really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. I do feel like because it was old, it was getting a little bit dried out and starting to like break off a little bit, crumble a little bit, but I don't feel like that's how they started out when I first bought them. So I may invest in like a fresh one of these guys because they're only like six, seven dollars. It's very, very affordable. But like the way these looked paired together was really, really nice. Gave a really beautiful nude look to the lips. So. Pat McGrath lip glosses, these are beautiful. They smell like chocolate frosting. They make your lips look juicy and lovely and they're just beautiful, but uh, I am going to be sadly parting with mine. Now something that I did bring into the rotation this month that I also might be chucking and I'm also sort of like not too broken about are the Alme Goddess glosses. So these I had in my collection for quite a while. I think I got them at the beginning of last year. Hadn't reached for them so I decided to kind of like put them back into the rotation. But to be honest the times that I did wear these I didn't really love them as much as I remembered loving them. They were a little gloopy feeling on my lips. I felt like maybe I just put on too much 
much, but they just had that kind of stringy thing going on where your lips kind of have those little stringy bits when you put them together. Like It was just not super flattering. The shine is pretty on these. Like They don't add glitter so much as they add like an iridescent sparkle. And I thought that was nice and like they don't smell bad. They're not like an unpleasant gloss to wear in that respect. I just didn't feel like when I wore them that my immediate reaction was like, oh my god, wow, this is so beautiful, I need to wear this all the time. Maybe I've been ruined by the Pat McGrath. I mean, it's quite possible when you use one of her glosses. It's kind of hard to use anything else and be super impressed. I just feel like these were kind of meh. They were alright, but I, I didn't really feel like they were anything that I was super in love with. So I'll probably throw these away as well because they are over a year old now and uh, they may or may not be infected with my germs. And then these last two lipsticks I've only been wearing since I have recovered from my illness, so maybe the last like week and a half, two weeks or so, but uh, they're both really beautiful so I wanted to tell you about them. And they are the new Becca Ultimate Lipstick Love in the shade Dusk. I got this in my Boxy Luxe box. This is such a pretty creamy nude lip. I really have been liking wearing this. I do feel like I need a lip liner when I wear this because on my lip color it's a little bit light. I do have kind of naturally darker lips the way that they're pigmented so if I go in with a more rosy lip liner underneath and kind of layer this on top I think it looks really really beautiful it's got that nice kind of like creamy satin finish to it it's hydrating on the lips so it's it has shine but it's not like lip gloss shiny it's really really nice very comfortable and the packaging is beautiful super sleek so Definitely enjoying this, and this is going to stay in the rotation for April so I can use it some more. And then I just busted this out the other day. I'm trying to think if I filmed with this on or not. Possibly. Yes, I wore this in my 5K giveaway video. This is the uh, Flesh Beauty Strong Flesh Lipstick in the shade Soul, which is a beautiful, like, ultra vibrant orangey red shade, which, uh... If y'all know me, if you've been around here for a while, is uh, entirely my jam. And I have to say, I was so impressed with the wear time on this lipstick. So I put this on first thing in the morning when I was getting ready, and it was on my lips until dinner. Like, I think when I ate dinner, it finally kicked the bucket, but I was able to make it through filming, through doing stuff all day, and through eating lunch, through drinking water, and like... It was still there. And I think why that surprised me so much is that this is not a matte lipstick. This has a cream finish to it. Like it has like a little hint of shine. It's not super ultra glossy, but it doesn't dry down and it will transfer. So like this will rub off on stuff. It was rubbing off on like the straw I had in my little plastic uh, reusable water thing that I drink out of. But even as it transferred off, it still leaves behind a lot of color on the lips and it doesn't do that weird thing where you look like you're just wearing lip liner and the whole center of your lips is like entirely naked. It has a lot of pigment in it, so it has a lot of like grip to the lips. So even if you blot some of it off, even if some of it comes off with eating or drinking, like it, it says the name is Strong Flesh and it is a strong freaking lipstick. So I was really impressed. I mean, with a shade like this that's so bold and so red, you kind of have to be a little bit careful when it's not uh, smudge proof, not transfer proof, to not get it everywhere. I did have a moment where a piece of my hair got on my lips and then the hair went across my face and I had a nice little red line of lipstick. That kind of sucked. But I really love the fact that like I didn't have to touch up for like 10 hours and I still had a really nice looking lip on. All right, so that's everything for March. So let's head on over to my vanity and I will show you guys what I've picked out for April. All right, so let's get into what is in the Everyday Makeup collection for April. Side note, if you hear um, wind in the background, it is a crazy blustery day, so I apologize for the extra noise. So there's actually not a whole lot of changes going on up here. Um, I really liked a lot of the lip products that I picked out for March and because I was sick, I really didn't get a chance to use a lot of them. So you're gonna see a lot of things that are the same from last time. This Smile Lipstick from All May, I still haven't gotten around to using, so that's gotta happen. The Flesh Lipstick I just talked about, as well as the shade Moist. This was in the rotation last month. Coral Shore, which is a really 
pretty coral pink from Shiseido. So I'm gonna try to reach for that. Basically everything in here is very springy. I have peach blossom from Pixie Beauty, which is a gorgeous peachy um, kind of coral shade. Love that. Daiquiri from Tarte. This is a color splash lipstick. This is a really fun kind of hot coral pink. So keeping that in the rotation. This is my new Becca Ultimate Love lipstick I also just talked about. So this is something I want to continue to keep using. And then for my nudes, I have the Dose of Colors Hey Girl as well as Flower Beauty Spiced Petal. And then my two Bite Beauty lipsticks back here. So lots of corally pink fun things in the rotation this month as well as a few nudes. As far as complexion stuff goes, we know Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion is never going anywhere. Keeping the face tape around. I did bring back out the ColourPop No Filter as well as my Bare Minerals Bare Pro. That's actually the combination I'm wearing on my face today in this video. Keeping the Pure Lease BB Cream. I love this for every day. I also have the Revlon Photo Ready Candid, another like nice light everyday kind of product. This guy is new. This is the Ulta Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. I was able to pick this up during the 21 Days of Beauty for super cheap, so I wanted to try this out. And I didn't have enough room up here with all my other concealers, so that's why it's down here. Everything else here is still the same from the last like four months. I haven't gotten anything new. I am trying to finish my Maybelline Fit Me concealer and I'm also trying to finish my shape tape so that way I can maybe move this up here. But uh, so far, still working on a lot of these guys. So moving on to the drawers, uh, my complexion drawer here is basically identical to what you saw back in March. The only thing that is brand new is I just put in a fresh new compact of my Bare Minerals a Bare Pro Powder Foundation because the one that I had in here before, I mean, I had hit some serious pan. I used it while I was sick. I've had it for quite a while now, and I was like, you know what? I think it was just time, uh, just time to get rid of it. So decided to put my fresh new compact. I had repurchased this like six months ago, so I was just waiting to move it into the rotation, and here it is. But yeah, everything else in here you guys have seen a million times before. Just got a few samples I gotta work through. Wander Beauty Powder Foundation that I love, and then the Maybelline Superstay that I like. I don't think I like it as much as I like my high-end powders, but for something drugstore, it's not bad. Now this is where things get fun. We have the blushes and bronzers that I've picked out for this month. So first up, we have uh, this bronzer here from Makeup Geek. This is the shade Suncast, and I haven't reached for this in ages, so it's definitely something that I needed to pull back out of my collection and try again. Then I brought this guy out of the rotation, which I was very excited about because I love this highlight so, so, so much. I think it's one of the best drugstore highlighters there is. This is the Illuminating, or what is it called? The Strobe Light Instant Glow Powder from Milani. This is in the shade Sun Glow, which is uh, shade number three. So it's kind of one of the medium shades. And just oh, look at the beautiful glow this gives. Lighting might make it a little bit hard to appreciate the way that I have this set up, but it is a truly beautiful highlight that doesn't look chalky, it doesn't look metallic on the skin, it just gives you this gorgeous glow and it doesn't fade easily. It's just, oh, such a good highlight for $10, like you can't beat it. Then I have this blush from Pretty Vulgar that I had gotten in a BoxyCharm a while back. It's in the shade Hush Blush, which is a really, really beautiful sort of neutral pink. This is a very soft, very, very pigmented product. You have to be kind of careful with this blush because a little bit goes a very, very long way. And then the last two guys up here are the Becca uh, Luminous Blush in the shade Snapdragon, which is so stinking pretty. This is very vibrant. It's very like tropical in the way that it looks. It gives me like summertime tropical vibes. So I haven't reached for this I think since last summer and definitely wanted to bust it out again. And then I needed something to fit in this little space here and I figured what would be more perfect than my Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter in Hustla Baby. This is a really beautiful sort of peachy gold highlight that definitely has like a little bit of almost like a sparkle to it. It's not real glittery, but it definitely is not for the faint of heart. It's a, it's a really fun highlight. So this is what we're working with. I think it's a fun little collection and I'm very excited to be using these guys this month. And then this last drawer, I feel like 
does have quite a few new things in it. It does look pretty different than it did in March. This has really become my like brow product drawer. Brows and a little bit of eye stuff and I definitely have grown in my brow product collection in the last month. So in here now you'll see I have my iconic London eyebrow cushion that I got in my Boxylux box that I am pretty much obsessed with right now. I just talked about this in my beauty report video if you want to hear more of my thoughts on it, but this I've been really, really loving. Uh, and then I have 8 million of these uh, brow gels. Um, some of them are tinted, some of them are clear. I have the e.l.f. Brow Well, which I did start just testing out last month. I have the Soap and Glory Archery Volume Boost brow fiber gel. This is probably the least favorite one I have. It's just very, very wet and it's very messy. So I find it a little bit difficult to work with. Then I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills clear brow gel, which is a classic. This is great to use whenever I'm using like brow pencils because it's clear and it like cements your eyebrows into place. Then I have the Kaja uh, brow blowout fiber gel. This one is also tinted, very similar to the Benefit Gimme Brow, but I think is maybe like a little bit thicker in consistency adds maybe like a little bit more tint to the brows. And then the uh, Lash Food Brow Food Clear Brow Enhancing Gel Fix, which is again just a clear brow gel. But this one has some like nourishing peptides and stuff in it to help your brows grow. And it's a little bit softer than the ABH. So sometimes I'll use this on a day where my eyebrows are a little more natural and I don't care so much about them being perfect. And then this guy I literally just bought. This is the NYX Glitter Primer. I bought this to replace my Too Faced Glitter Glue. And I had this once before, but it was years ago. And I remember it being pretty decent. So I'm excited to try it again and see how it compares to the Too Faced. And then this is very exciting. This is a MAC Paint Pot. It's the first one I've ever owned. I just bought the one in Soft Ochre during the 21 Days of Beauty sale. So I look forward to uh, testing this out in an upcoming Makeup Playtime video. So when it comes to Primers, uh, nothing has changed over here in the last couple of months, really. The newest thing I have is the Touch and Soul No Porblum Primer. I got this, I think, back in February. So that has been the newest thing I've gotten. Everything else has stayed the same. Also, when it comes to eyeliners and brow products, everything else is pretty much the same that you guys have seen. The newest things I got were the uh, ColourPop Brow Boss Pencil, wherever that has hidden itself oh, right here. Um, and uh, the IT Cosmetics one, I pulled that one out, the uh, Brow Power Pencil, but those I had last month as well. So everything else in here, pretty much the same old, same old. But I did take a bunch of new stuff out of the drawers uh, for my little lip product cup here. So this is what we're working with for liquid lipsticks and lip glosses and pencils and all that kind of good stuff. This first one here I got in PR I think back in February. It's one of the new Carity Matte liquid lipstick shades in the shade Ginger Spice. This is definitely a more fall color but I really like it and I'd like to get a little bit more use out of before I fully transition into like spring and summer colors because then I won't like touch it again until September. So want, wanted to try to give this guy a little bit more love while I could. Then this liquid lipstick I think I did pick out for March but then I got sick and then I got afraid so I never ended up using it because y'all know I had to throw away some lip products because I had strep throat so I did not actually end up trying this and I am looking forward to giving it a go. This is in the shade catnip. I picked this up uh, from TJ Maxx when they were clearing out uh, some old packaging. So this looks like it'll be a pretty spring summery type shade. Then this I haven't used in forever, but I love this so much last summer. This is the Beauty Crop Lip Brulee High Shine Lip Cream in the shade Gumdrop. And it is a really beautiful berry toned, kind of like a lip oil and a lip gloss had like a baby. It has quite a bit of pigment to it, but it's not really like gloopy like a gloss. It's very thin and almost like a lip oil in texture. It's really pretty and I just love, love, love this color. So I missed it. I haven't used it in a long time. Definitely wanted to bring it back into the rotation. And the same thing goes for this Pixie lip icing that they did in collaboration with Chloe Morello. I think they released more shades of this particular formula, but this was the original. It's in the shade cake and it's a really beautiful kind of duochromatic glittery lip topper and it smells delicious it smells like lemon cake so 
I haven't reached for this in forever, wanted to give it a go again. Then I have this creamy lip stain from The Balm. This is really beautiful. It's a nice nude neutral pink and it's a very easy lip color to wear um, because it goes on kind of like a gloss or a lip stain but it the shine sort of wears away after a while and it just leaves a nice little wash of color on your lips it's just the kind of thing you can throw in your purse and reapply as you need to throughout the day and not really have to fuss with because it's not like a dark or difficult color so Looking forward to using this again. Then I actually have two repurchases of products that I already owned and decluttered because they were old. So this is a fresh, brand new Dose of Colors Lip It Up Satin Lipstick in the shade Cinnamon Spice, Cinnamon, Cinnamon Swirl, I'm sorry, Cinnamon Spice was the Butter London one that I used to have. Uh, but this is what it looks like. Oh, it is such a gorgeous color. The only thing I really don't like about this is the fact that the product doesn't actually twist down all the way into the packaging, so it's very easy to nick this. That does drive me crazy, like you always end up getting it in the cap. But the color is so pretty and the formula is very, very moisturizing and creamy on the lips, so I really, really wanted to get this again while it was on sale for 21 Days of Beauty because the one that I had was like two years old. I wore it while I was sick last summer and like I've been afraid to pick it up ever since. So just decided to get myself a brand new one. And then this guy I'm very, very excited about. This is the Nude Sticks Lip and Cheek Pencil, like the original, original Nude Sticks formula in the shade Ripe. And fun story, but this product was the very first thing from Nude Sticks I ever, ever tried. And I still had it, which was like from, I don't know, 2013, when I was doing my declutter this uh, January. And I was like, I just can't put something that's like, you know, five years old on my lips. I, I just should get a new one. And then fortunately they went on sale for 21 Days of Beauty for half price. So I picked up a new one because I absolutely adore this shade and I feel like I appreciate these peach tones even more now than I did five years ago. So very, very excited to be able to have this guy. And then while I was at it, I have this intense matte lip and cheek in the shade Entice that I really haven't used very much. This is a really pretty pale nude color. So I thought I might give this guy a whirl and see what I thought of it. And then finally, this was in the rotation last month as well because this is still relatively new to me. It's the Kaja Heart Melter uh, Lip Gloss Stick in the shade Honey Bunny, but that's such a beautiful deep nude shade. Really, really enjoying this. So I wanted to keep it around for another month. And then as far as eyeshadow palettes go, I, I don't want to limit myself too much this month because I just did my ColourPop challenge. I kind of want to be able free to like run through my collection and use whatever inspires me. But I will say that I want to specifically make sure that I use this palette this month, which is the LMR Cosmetics Reina del Caribe Volume 1 palette. I think this is so beautiful. I never reach for it and you guys give me so many compliments on the blue look that I did in my beauty report video that I'm just like, I really need to use these shades. They're so, so stunning and it's been forever. So this is a palette I definitely want to make sure that I do some looks with this month because it's definitely giving me those summertime warm weather vibes and I'm all about channeling that right now. So. At the very least, we're gonna make sure this guy gets some love. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the products I had in my everyday makeup drawer for March and also seeing what I have picked out for April. Definitely make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know if you tried any of these products, what you think about them, if you're loving them, if you're hating them, what are you gonna be putting in your stash for April? Is there like anything you're pulling out of your drawers that you're super excited to use let me know because I love chatting with you guys and if you enjoyed this series make sure you give this video a thumbs up it really helps me out it supports my channel helps me in that YouTube algorithm to be discovered by more awesome people like yourself so thank you in advance if you choose to do that and uh, if you're new and you're not subscribed I hope you'll click the button I hope you'll come back and hang out with me again and on that note I actually have to go uh, get stabbed in the arm I've got to go get an allergy shot and to be honest I am like excited for it because I've not been able to drink wine since February with all this illness and craziness and the way the timing of my shots have fallen like I've not been able to have a glass of wine 
in months and I am ready for it. So once I'm like re-upped <laughs> my immune system on my allergy shots, I should have like a week or two that I can like have a glass of wine and not feel like death. So that's what I'm going to do. But I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.